Hello! Welcome to another Southern New Hampshire University's Learning Center tutorial on how to use Minitab Express. If you haven't already installed Minitab, you are going to do, uh, have to do so in order to use Minitab, so you can either do that through the Minitab uh, website or you can do it through the Blackboard site uh, through Southern New Hampshire University. If you haven't done that, uh, there's a video within this series of tutorials where you can uh, watch how to actually get Minitab Express installed through the Blackboard site. So if you haven't done so already, check that video out and uh, get Minitab installed. And once that's done, you can open it up and you'll be looking at basically what my screen is here. So once Minitab is open, uh, we're going to be doing this test. For this video, we're strictly doing a one sample T test. Uh, so in that case, we basically have one sample of means uh, and we're going to do a high, sorry, we're going to be doing a hypothesis test for this. Sorry, apparently I can't speak. I've been doing a lot of these videos today. So anyway, so if you hit the statistics tab and you'll go over to one sample, oh, I passed it, it's right here. And we're going to be selecting the T option because you know we're doing one sample T. And that'll prompt uh, this pop-up box, which is gonna ask you for some more information. So in this case, I put all the data into uh, column one. So if you actually have the data in this drop-down menu here, you'll select sample data in column. You'll hit C1, it'll throw that into this box, and you're going to be performing hypothesis tests. Now, the hypothesized mean uh, is going to be given to you in the problem, so let's say that the null was that we wanted 35. So we will throw that out there and it's going to run our test. And this is everything we need. It gives us our mean, standard deviation, standard error, 95% confidence interval for that. That is uh, also included in the printout. And then it lists the test for us. So in that case, I said that our null was that the average was 35. Um, and our alternative was that it wasn't equal to 35. And that gives us our critical value, T, and our P value here. Uh, at that point, you have all the information needed to complete the hypothesis test. Um, so just getting into more detail with that, I'm going to run that test again. So let's just do that C1, perform a hypothesis test for 35. Uh, if you select the options tab at the top here, you choose the alternative hypothesis you're working with. So the default that we just did was saying that the alternative hypothesis was not equal to. If you select this drop down menu, you can choose if you're saying that it's less than or greater than. Um, so yeah, that totally depends on the question that you, or the test that you're performing. So you can just select the option and you can also change your confidence level here uh, for the confidence interval that'll be printed out. And then you don't really need to do much with this display, but if, you know, maybe your professor wants a histogram box plot or anything like that, you know, you will just select these. So I'll just do a uh, histogram, I guess. And yeah, so then when we run it this time, we get our histogram here and it now does the lower bound. And what we're testing now is that the average is greater than that or it's increased and that will then give us a p-value as well. In a situation that you don't actually have the sample information and you just have summary statistics, you just, you know, same thing, uh, but instead of having sample data in a column for this drop down, you'll select it and you'll choose summarize data. At this point, you'll just enter the information because the problem will have to tell you a sample size. So let's say it told us we sampled 10 in individuals and within those 10 individuals, we had a mean of 38 with a standard deviation of 1.9. Uh, again, same thing, you can you click perform a hypothesis test and see if it was actually equal to 35 or whatever it is that the question is asking. These are all just numbers that I'm making up as we go. So you'll need to make sure you put in your numbers from your problem uh, in order for you to get the correct answer. Uh, but anyway, so again, you can hit the options and choose which test or alternative uh, mean you're testing here. And then you'll just hit OK. And then it does the same thing. It gives us a p-value based off of our summary stats rather than the raw data put in C1. But yeah, that's basically all that there is to it, uh, using Minitab to use a one-sample t-test. Hopefully that helped. If not, you can use the step-by-step -step procedure that uh, is in the document you're most likely looking at this from. If you don't have the document in front of you, then uh, hopefully this video was enough and that you're able to now do one-sample t-test using Minitab Express.